So, my name is Scott Baker for SD3, and a point of information is what I've uh, come up for. I was wondering if, for the sake of expediency and to provide clarification, it seems like we could shorten some of the debate, if the gentleman could provide a brief explanation of the rationale behind each amendment before we begin debate. I'm willing if they will accept my, uh, with, with the understanding that my interpretation can also be debated. I'm not the king up here pronouncing the... Uh, the chair will endeavor to give you a brief description of what he thinks the motion to do, uh, is. The microphone will be open in case anybody has a different view and everybody will get a fair chance to be heard. All right. Uh, the chair now recognizes Mr. Crocker for the purpose of report regarding Rule 24. Mr. Chairman, by direction of the committee, I move the adoption of the amendment to Rule 24 found on page 8 of the committee report. The amendment to the I don't have a 24. There are only... I am advised that there are no changes of substance to Rule 22. That is a cleanup that will be dealt with at on the last motion. We're, we're on uh, 24. Oh, he's talking about the renumbers. By direction of the committee, I move the adoption of the amendment to Rule 24 found on page 8 of the committee report. The amendment to, to Rule uh, 24 deals with the timing of, of the filing of a minority report. Uh, there has been a, a great deal of concern about what's proper with regard to the timing of the filing of minority reports from particularly the Rules Committee through the years and the Platform Committee through the years. This is designed, this, this uh, amendment is intended to clarify when a, a uh, committee, when a minority report can be filed and it requires that the, the People who want to file the minority report notify the chairman of the committee before the committee adjourns and then uh, provide, a, the, provide the minority report itself within 30 minutes after the committee has adjourned. The rationale of the committee was that the committee chairman is entitled to know that a minority report will be prepared and filed and if the committee chairman desires to give the committee an opportunity to deal with the issue again in light of that information, he can do it, or she can do it, but can't do it if the notice is not given before the, the, uh, uh, before the committee has adjourned. Secondly, uh, the time within which the motion should be filed is extended to 30 minutes after the committee has adjourned, understanding that there are publication deadlines that require that these, these minority reports, if they're going to be published with the committee report, must be done very promptly. The chair recognizes the delegate in microphone two that has a white light for interrupting action. Can you state your name, Senatorial District, and nature of the interrupting action? Chairman Munisteri, this is Tom Washington from SD12 with the point of parliamentary inquiry. Is rule number 22 available for a substantive amendment uh, at this time? No. Tom Darian says no. No, All right, would anybody like to be heard on the amendment to rule 24? Anybody would like to be heard on rule 24, please go to the microphone. <laughs> Uh, the chair recognizes the delegate uh, for the purpose of a motion. My name is Ron Brunner, Senatorial 15 in Houston. I'd like to call the question. That's what I was going to do. <laughs> All right. Is there a second to find the question? Thank you, Ron. We don't want by unanimous consent since no one wants to speak on it. Is that all right? We just go to the question. Yes. All those in favor of the amendment to Rule 24, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? No! <laughs> 24 passes. The chair now 
We have to be careful with how we uh, work things in parliamentary procedures. What are the next couple? Are there any more than one block of that? Or anything like that? The parliamentarian indicates that your motion is in order. It's not debatable and requires two-thirds to basically sustain what would be your motion to proceed in that fashion. Is there a second for his... Don't need, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I don't, don't need a second parliamentary... No, 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 it's a parliamentary in this It's not debatable, it doesn't require a second. Oh. In the form of an objection to proceeding in a way that basically breaks up, I mean, doesn't break up the rules when you put them together, I understand that. So the vote in favor is to sustain his objection, and that requires two-thirds. So what we, it's not debatable, so it means that we are moving to a vote on whether to sustain his objection. Parliamentarians say, though, it is appropriate to take a an interrupting in action because it could be another point of parliamentary procedure. So we'll go to microphone three, state the nature of your parliamentary objection, and I will try to keep all these straight. Mr. Chairman, Nathan Zucca, SD5. My point on order is that rule number 16A provides that previous question is held on a majority vote. It is not a two-thirds vote. This yeah, but this is not a motion. This is not a motion on the previous question. Then I'd like to know what the motion finds. <laughs> it's to object it's it's the motion. objection to the consideration of the question. That's a different parliamentary maneuver. This gentleman must know is Robert Ford. <laughs> um, which is impressive. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we have. Uh, uh, another white light on four. We're considering interrupting actions for, uh, only at this time for four. Please state your name. Yeah. In the the point of order, James Byers, Senate, Senate District 4. In as the committee chairman has been required to provide an explanation of the reason for any amendments, uh, it seems to stand to reason that anyone proposing new motions or amendments also be required to provide an explanation. Well, that's neither uh, really a motion of information. That's not a point of order or a point of information, which is what we're taking interrupting actions under the white light over. Um, microphone one, you have an interrupting action under Robert's rule. I have a point of information. This is Dan Pickens, SD16. Could you repeat and summarize exactly what we're getting ready to vote on? Before I do so, let me make sure with the summary I'm going to give you the parliamentary With the guy who's leading us doesn't know what's going on. That's why you have parliamentarians to clarify because he brings up a, a valid issue, you know, and that, you know, in putting the collection of these all together. No, it's just this whole we thing. We would be voting on. It's not ridiculous. It's voting on. You live in a republic, don't you? The objection to the consideration of having all the motions considered. Why? Yeah. That's competitive. So that's like an extreme. And he's used a republic. parliamentary procedure. Uh, some other things. Different from the other ones. That Confederacy bothers you. So, so what that means is that yes. yes. if two thirds of us vote in favor, then we go back to discussion of the individual changes. Is that correct? I think you vote no. If you vote aye, which is to sustain his objection, which requires two thirds, what happens is we simply go back to debating each rule individually. There is a white light, which could be an interrupting action, so we will take it. Uh, 
guest is trying to participate in a duly constituted convention, or if you're not a duly seated delegate, um, please let's have integrity. You will see that. You will see that. It's seated. So I just All right. The chair recognizes the uh, interrupting action on the microphone. Journal 5, Senate District 617. I uh, request an appeal to the last vote and go to a recorded vote. Mr. Chairman, your City District 21 committee man, Eric O'Piella. I move to amend the 2012 Permanent Rules Committee Report, Rule 33, page 11, line 53, to insert at the end of line 53 the following statement. The election of a permanent convention chairman shall not be in order until a majority of those delegates elected at county or senatorial district conventions have registered in attendance at the state convention. For the purposes of this section, alternates seated as delegates shall be counted as delegates. Thank you, Mr. Opiel. An amendment to the amendment has been made. Is there a second to this amendment? Uh, the chair record, I think, believe the delegate wants to speak of making the purposes of second. Is that true? Mr. Chairman, Deborah Medina, alternate delegate, seated delegate. Welcome, Mr. Medina, your Thank you, sir. Wharton County, I would like to second Mr. Opiella's amendment. The second is noted. We now have an amendment that has been duly moved and, and seconded. That means that we now have the amendment to the amendment before the body at this time will entertain debate either in favor or in opposition to the amendment to the amendment. Does anybody wish to be heard? A light is on for interrupting action on microphone three. The delegate is recognized. Please state your name, Senator Trump, and state the nature of your interrupting action. Nathan Zook, SD5, I have a parliamentary inquiry. Is it the view of the chair that if we were to adopt this, that the convention would be blocked from all action until the majority of delegates have arrived? No. <laughs> Anybody else wish to be heard on the amendment to the amendment? All right, seeing none, we are going to move to the vote. This is to the amendment. The amendment that Mr. Opiella and uh, Ms. Medina, uh, well, I see a light. So, uh, I'll recognize the delegate at microphone three that wishes to speak in favor of Mr. Opiella and Ms. Medina's amendment to the amendment. You're so recognized. Please state your name, Senatorial District, and you may proceed. Mr. Chairman, I normally don't join with Ms. Medina on many things. <laughs> However, the report of the Rules Committee allows a minority of your delegates to elect the permanent chair. This would correct that error, in my opinion, and would require a majority of the delegates elected at your county and senatorial district conventions to have a say in the most important vote of the next convention. That is why I have offered this amendment and am fully in support of it. Thank you, Mr. O'Neill and Ms. Medina. And there's a right light on two. If this could be an interrupting action, the chair recognizes that delegate. Please state your name, senatorial. Chairman Munister, this is Tom Washington as the 12th parliamentary inquiry. Would this amendment ever cause the state convention not to be able to convene because there weren't a majority of delegates at that time? Yeah. Yeah. Ellen Medina, interesting little mix there.
the answer is you can convene for the purpose of the temporary business. There is a theoretical chance, which would be so remote as to be next to impossible, which is theoretically if there was a hurricane and a storm and a flood and a majority of delegates never, ever, ever got to the convention, you couldn't have that, but that would be extremely remote. Uh, like four, there is an interrupting action light. The delegate that is recognized by the chair, please state your name, your central district, and the major interrupting action. He withdrew. All right. Since we've had uh, two speakers in favor, we'll now go to negative. There is a negative on one. The chair recognizes the delegate. Please state your name, central district. May receive your comments. Yeah. We're in state. Microphone one, you may go forward. Mr. Chairman, this is Diane McCredden from State District 8. I'm in opposed to the amendment to the amendment because every delegate to this convention and future conventions has the opportunity to arrive on time. Now recognize somebody uh, in favor since we just had somebody opposed. Microphone one is also recognized for the purpose of speaking in favor of the amendment. To the amendment, the delegate is recognized. Please state your name, senatorial district, please, sir. Mr. Chair, my name is Jeff Cook, Senate District Nine. I rise in support of this motion. My during the temporary rules committee, my primary objection to this rule as current was that it did not protect the rights of the delegates to uh, have a voice in the permanent chair. I believe Ms. Rubio's amendment does do that, and I fully support it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. There is a, a light and microphone for which indicates a possible uh, interrupting action. The delegate will be recognized, therefore. Please state your name, Senatorial District, and state your interrupting Bob action. Jones, Senate District 20. Uh, point of information, if you could help clarify, the first Congressional District Caucus meeting is to follow this third general session. If it is postponed at 5 until 9 tonight, at what point did the first Congressional District Caucus meeting take place? No, the Congressional District Caucus starts on time. That's why we have the recess scheduled at 5. So we'll start at 5. Thank you, sir. No, I mean, I think you're scheduled for 5.30, aren't you? 5. 5. five. five. It just says upon adjournment. Yeah. All right. Well, upon, oh. we, will, uh, we will recess at 5. You go to your congressional district offices. Then you go, hopefully, to the gala or something else. And then you can get a little rest, get a little fuel, to go for a few more hours, and you come back here at night. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. By the way, he's one of our five members of the state of the chair recognizes uh, the microphone number two because there's a white light. Delegate, please state your name, Senator Orleans. Cindy Davidson, SD 14, point of order, uh, point of information. Do we not have to have a quorum of delegates to conduct business in the first place? Yes. Then why are we debating this? The chair is really not supposed to comment at any time. <laughs> but I take the question was really not important. Uh, so that would be your full part. Chair recognizes microphone three because there's a white light and interrupting action. Delegate is recognized. Please state your name. Senator District of the Nature of Interrupting Action. Mr. Minister, Eric O'Piella again. Chairman, uh, committee man from Senate District 21. Does the quorum requirement in Rule 13 require a majority of elected delegates to be present to participate in the convention or merely a majority of those delegates who have re registered and received their credentials at the convention? The parliamentarians uh, inform us it's the majority of registered delegates. Thank you. 
there is a blue light with a red light, so it could be a motion uh, or amendment to the amendment to the amendment. So this so is a the draft. So the delegate on the majority of the delegates are recognized. Please state your name. Oh, Rick, you're saying a message. Well, I'd like to call the motion or the question to order. Rick, we were sent a message. Well, I'd like to call the motion or the question to all the questions on this. <laughs> well, fortunately, you only get to do one at a time. So I, I, on that, I'm calling the question to the amendment to the motion and the motion. And according to Robert's rules, that is accepted. I, I am wrong. I am wrong. Uh, we, so, yes. You guys are good. <laughs> <laughs> We can take the motion up. We can take the motion up to call the question. All right, there's a motion to call all questions, which means that there wouldn't be any further debate on the amendment to the amendment. There would be no further debate on the amendment. Then, if by chance you pass that, we then go to two votes. We can do the amendment to the amendment and then to the amendment. Y'all got that? <laughs> all right, all those in favor of the motion to cut off debate entirely for both the amendment and the amendment and the amendment, please signify by saying aye. Aye! aye. All those opposed? The ayes have it. We're now going to vote on the amendment to the amendment, which was the one presented by Mr. Opiella uh, and Ms. Medina. What have Everybody you know what we're voting on? All right, I'll just read it. Y'all give me a second let me have my cheat glass cut off. This is the amendment to the amendment. The election of a permanent convention chairman shall not be in order until a majority of those delegates elected at county or senatorial district conventions have registered in attendance at the state convention. For the purposes of this section, alternates seated as delegates shall be counted as delegates. So maybe I should explain a little further. What Mr. Crocker's motion does is allow the moving up the election of the permanent chair earlier in the convention process. Their amendment says that's okay, but there's a caveat that you need to have a majority of the, the delegates. So right now we're voting on the amendment to the amendment that requires the majority of the delegates. I hope that helps. All right, so now, all those in favor of the amendment to the amendment, please signify by saying aye. Aye! All those opposed? No! no. I can't tell. We got 22 minutes to five. This may be the last thing we do. Uh, before the break, not the last thing. All right, I, honestly, I just can't tell. Uh, so. Well, let's try to show our hands first. We may have that, that, that during the roll call. All those in favor of the amendment to the amendment, delegates only, <coughs> delegates only, please raise your hand. Okay, this is... Amendment to the amendment, Mr. Opiella and Ms. Medina's amendment to the amendment. 